Now, as a leader, um, just describe when you witnessed the transformative power of an abundant mindset, you know, creating this culture of generosity, collaboration, innovation. You and I talk about this. Um, and just share a pivotal moment where you embody the generative adaptive practice of abundance minds of the abundance mindset. Um, so why don't you just give us some context about, about that? Yeah. So, uh, the first part of, I think your question, um, uh, describing a time when I witnessed the transformative power and abundant mindset, um, in a senior leadership meeting within an IT department, um, the issue really had to deal with de dealing with the dissenting voices. Right. Uh, I remember the, the the chief leader in that space um, had already achieved general consensus about a course course of action that needed to be taken on a very sensitive issue. And uh, whereas most leaders might avoid getting the opinion from those who might oppose a directive like this, this leader sought out the dissenting voice to ensure that all sides of the issues were discussed. So you had that amazing slide uh, with the Ubuntu principles, I belong, I see you, I value, I welcome you. This is a leader knowing that certainly he was going to make the decision based on the general consensus, but he still wanted even the dissenting voices to be heard. So I, I just really love that slide. I think it resonates well with that particular instance. And I just saw that the psychological, the psychological safety at that level of leadership was better than what I thought before I joined that uh, joined that department, that team. So I was very, very impressed by that. Other other senior leaders might not even swing the microphone that direction to give them time to even speak their thoughts, but that was not the case in this instance. So I'm grateful that I'll be part of that. Me personally, uh, sharing a pivotal moment when uh, I hope I embody this thought of generative uh, leadership. I remember having a meeting with my team about a year ago. And we were having a general conversation about the importance of relationships. Everyone here on the panel, everyone attending the session probably is aware of this, but one, you never know where you're going to have to work again with someone you're at odds with today. And two, whether you know it or not, you're always interviewing. So in both scenarios, as I told them, relationships are everything. So what I did was I encouraged the team to try and exercise. I told them to think of someone that they've had a rough decision uh, I'm sorry, discussion with lately, and maybe that relationship is not as positive as it should be. Um, I asked them all to consider reaching out to the individual and doing something in the form of, hey, you know, our last conversation wasn't the most constructive or positive, and I want to do what I can to help us communicate better. Can we start over and see if we can land in a better place with that issue? So the whole point of the exercise was to try to restore kind of that psychological safety between the two individuals. Um, and think in terms, I think you had this on one of your slides, think in terms of we and not I, right? Uh, no, no man or woman is an island unto themselves. So my logic is that uh, healing and individual relationships can eventually spread into the broader organization. And that was the whole intent of that exercise. They were reluctant, a few of them took me up on the offer. Um, others chose not to, but that's okay. That's okay. Hey, you did your part, man. You did your part.